couple of months ago, I got my hands on the Astrotech AT60ED Apochromatic Refractor. It was $419 from Astronomics, and it is a 60 millimeter tiny refractor with FPL 53 glass, fully multi-coated, and even though they market it as an apochromatic telescope, I don't think it is because it is a doublet, but from the tests I've done, I have not seen any kind of um, color aberrations um, that you'd normally expect from an acromat. So calling it an apochromatic isn't too far off. So it's a beautiful little telescope. It's tiny. It fits in a camera bag. Um, so I carry it around like a lens. I haven't been able to do a full test with this using a field flattener or a reducer because they just haven't been in stock. But I hope they get back in stock before the nebula season comes out. So this thing comes, you know, with the built-in lens hood here. So you know, it pops in and out pretty easily. So I have it mounted on a Vixen-style um, dovetail plate, and it sits very nicely here. It's currently sitting on my AVX. On the side here, you can see that it comes with a dual-speed focuser. So this is the the fast one, and this is the uh, the ten times ratio. So it does it 10 times slower so it works pretty well on the back here we have a couple of attachments so this is the uh, 1.25 inch eyepiece holder or diagonal if you want to put it in there um, it's held together by compression rings so it won't make dents in your in your equipment uh, you can also unscrew these thumb screws and take it out and now you can fit in two inches so it's about 48 millimeters here and also uses compression rings the one thing you'll save on if you use a camera is it comes with a camera angle adjuster. It's this red thing here. And this is the knob here. So if I unhook uh, un or loosen this, I can turn the camera and then tighten it back up and it'll stay in place. When we focus out, you can see the millimeter markings here so it goes up to 75 i believe so it gives you plenty of backspace for your camera i've only tested this with my dslr and i've only needed to go to 35 uh, because that is uh, i think 35 or 40 I, I forget what it is but it, it sits pretty well and i didn't need to put a pull it out all the way from astronomics they also gave this shoe finder uh, the cinta style shoe finder works pretty well and this red thing here uh, you can kind of see it uh, it's to lock in the focusing tube so uh, once you have it focused so that temperature or you don't accidentally pull it out of focus uh, you can you can tighten this and again i haven't been able to test this with a flattener or a reducer but uh, i hope to get my hands on one soon so what you'll be seeing is things i have taken where i'm able to crop into the center like the moon orion nebula uh, and m13 where i didn't have to worry about the curvature on the edges so we'll take a look at that um, right after i show you what it looks like in its natural habitat so I have my AT60 in its natural habitat in my backyard. It's already polar aligned and I'm currently pointing it at the full moon. You can see just how bright it is. It's washing out everything else in the sky. I'll take pictures of the moon and some other objects in the sky real soon, but for now I'm just doing visuals just so I can enjoy my AT60. So we can take a quick peek at what it looks like through the eyepiece. Uh, it's a little hard to uh, focus it in there, but and it's not the best view through my phone's camera, but it looks really good when you're looking at it um, with your eyes. So I'm gonna go set up my astrophotography gear and take some pictures. So here's a shot of what it looks like with my current setup. No flattener or reducer in the train. Um, and let's take a look at what I was able to catch.